Welcome to this video on how to get started with migrating from Oracle Forms to Apex. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go to apex.oracle.com and under Solutions, you'll find a Modernizing Oracle Forms page, which has a lot of great information on motivations, the Apex advantages, how to get started, and what's next. Then if you go under Learn and Documentation, you'll find right near the top here this migration guide and this has a lot of excellent information in it such as overview of the migration process under the appendix we actually go through and talk about the difference between forms components and apex components so for example canvases equate to pages within apex but we're actually going to go into chapter three here converting an oracle forms application how to convert your application so basically what you need to do is get all of your executables, convert them into XML so that we can upload them into an Apex project. And if we go on to the next topic, it'll talk about the Forms to XML conversion tool. Now, this is only available in Oracle 9i and above. I happen to be running Forms 12c. So what I'm going to do is go and find that particular file. And to do that, I'm just going to go into my middleware directory and I'm just going to do a search for 2xml to find the file. So I'm just going to go and open that file location so that I can copy in the where the file is found. Then I'm going to go and start up a command prompt and I'll go to where my source files are kept. is in a directory called Summit. And I'm just going to paste that in. And the file itself is called frmf2xml. And then I'm just going to put in my FMB that I want converted. And just as easily as that, it's converted it to an XML. Now, because of the fact I'm running Forms 12, then you can actually do that directly from within inside the tool. So if you just go to File and then Convert, you can say Binary to XML, Browse for your file. I'm going to select the Customers form, and I want to overwrite it, and then I'm just going to Convert. And you'll see that it saved this as Customers underscore FMB.XML. So now what I'm going to do is go across into Apex and upload those XML files. So I'm just going to go back to my browser and I'll open up a new window and just go into Apex. So from here I'm going to go into the App Builder and then Oracle Forms Migrations create a new project and I'm just going to call this one demo and I can browse the file and I need to go to my directory now I'm just going to go ahead and create the project so the big advantage of actually uploading Oracle Forms and libraries and menus into an Apex project is you can easily see all of the details. For example, you can see that there's 23 different triggers. They're at different levels. There's block level triggers, there's form level triggers, and there's item level triggers. So you can see there's some here on when button press, for example. And this does various different code. So now let's go and have a look back at the form and see just how difficult it would be to find all that logic. The form level triggers, they're pretty easy to find. So for example, the when you form instance, I can go and have a look at the PL SQL in there. And you can see it's refreshing the tree and going to the navigator block and setting the view to one. However, if I want to go and have a look at the block level triggers, I've got to go into the various different blocks here and have a look what happens when a tree node is selected, for example. 
you can see that it's actually finding out the value of which record was selected and then actually going and executing a query to get the customers. For example, under customers here, I can see this post query trigger. And it's designed to get the sales rep name for that region. But it's really quite difficult to find all of the different places where developers can actually hide the logic. As opposed to that, I can very easily see all of the details here. For example, I might want to go and look at that post query trigger. And I can see that there's actually two of those. And I can annotate whether this is important or not. So I can change this to say it's not applicable. And I can add a comment in here. We'll be taken care of by ALAV. And I can apply the changes. You'll see that there's actually two of those here two different regions. I just found one of them and again with this one I'm going to say no it's not applicable. But there's a number of triggers that I might be worried about so I'm just going to go and find those ones which have been defined as applicable. For example I might be interested in this preform trigger here and you'll see that it's setting the default value for the global customer ID. So this one I'm going to say is applicable and I'm going to assign it to myself. So within Apex we use application items rather than global variables. One thing to understand here is you can't generate any Apex applications from this project. It's designed to be able to annotate important business logic such as triggers, program units, etc. and then be able to make sure that that logic isn't lost in the new application. In other videos I'll be showing you how to actually go and generate applications based on the underlying tables that you already have in your schema. Thank you.